Ah, oh, it popped. Oh, and the second one. Third one popped. Fourth one popped. And fifth one. No, this is not working for me. Hello. I am so happy to do this video for you guys today. I'm super, super excited. And so let's go over what we need. Okay. First, of course, go ahead and get your UV light, UV resin, um, some kind of liquid glue. If you don't have gauge pipes, it's okay. You can use whatever you have. For example, you, you can use this. You're going to need some kind of container. Um, I just dipped this in black paint. And the reason for that is because I actually did a test run on this and I messed up because um, it was in a clear container and the UV resin hardened because of the sunlight. And currently, I am in uh, my studio. I went ahead and closed all of the shutters. We have shutters here in Japan. I closed all of the shutters and I'm only working on my ring light and my room light. Um, so that's my tip number one. You're gonna have to work uh, in a room or environment where there's no sun please please feel free to skip over the parts that you do not want or need to watch okay but i do suggest that you watch as much as possible because i will be giving a lot of tips and tricks throughout Ugh. here we go okay so i'm gonna put enough in here that i can dip these petals this is a hundred gram bottle okay so i put a little more than half of it in there as you can see it's it's pretty thick the viscosity is pretty thick i'm not sure if it has to be elmer's glue but i have a feeling that all glue um you know they're really really similar in uh it, you know as far as the ingredients go this is a clear glue, so I'm hoping this will work. I recall that he only used a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Um, however, I am using a lot more UV resin than Daniel Cooper did in his experiment. So uh, I'm going to take about a drop. One drop. That's it. Let's do a mix, mix, mix. Oh, this is weird. It's becoming gloopy. I'm gonna test it out on this test piece here. I have two tester pieces here. Okay, so let's see. All right, it goes one and lifting. Oh, some of them are working, some of them aren't. Okay, let's try to, come on, come on, baby. Come on, we can do it. Oh, but it's so gloopy, but it's working, look. Okay, let me do, dip this one again. Oh, but the other one broke. Okay. No, then all of them broke. Okay. Okay. Let's dip the whole thing again. Did I use too much? Do you think it, that's what it was? I used too much, um, I used too much glue. Ignoring the one that didn't close. Let's just try to cure this one and see what happens. Maybe it would be best if they were like smaller individual pieces um, because it seems like the bigger they are the more that uh, it's difficult for it to go without popping um, and then um, with the big old gl glob you know you can't really get a very beautiful delicate effect. I think maybe I'll have to do a little bit more experimenting with that. Let's give it one more try. This resin itself is like the consistency of my dip resin. It's pretty thick. A little bit better, but it's still like, do you see how it's like blop, blop, blop? <laughs> it doesn't stream. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? But let's give it a try. Second time around, okay? Oh, it's working guys, it's working, it's working. It's working, but there's a lot of bubbles. I mean, I don't know if it's gonna pop. Ah, it popped. As soon as the, it ran off, it just popped. Oh, and the second one, third one popped, fourth one popped. Ah, uh, and fifth one. Nope, this is not, not working for me. 
I am back because I am not a quitter, okay? And I want to accomplish this in any way possible because I know it's possible. So um, I went ahead and put in another drop. If you remember, I diluted this um, and it didn't work. It was worse. Uh, none of them worked and they all popped. So that means that the thicker it is, the better that it works. I let it sit overnight uh, because when I mixed it, it was really foamy and bubbly. And today with all the shutters closed, no UV light coming in, I'm going to give this a try. I learned also from a Japanese master of wire art how to create these petals because I was not getting it right. So I'm going to teach you today. I'm going to take some 28 gauge wire and I'm going to need pinchers and cutters. I want to make them very small because they're going to go on this project. I can't have really big ones. So depending on what size you want, of course, you can go bigger. I want them as small as possible. I'm taking this 10 millimeter I'm going to hold it here and go around once, twice, three times, four times because I want four petals for these hydrangea flowers. Let me snip it here. Move these aside so you can see better. And then I'm going to take this wire and thread it through. Come on. Thread it through. Okay, tighten it. Pull, 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 tighten it. Then I'm going to twist it with this wire. Twist, twist, twist. Now we shape the petals before we split it apart. It's very important to pinch this bottom to create a V shape. It's very hard because they're so small, okay? I'm just gonna help it up. You could just do these with, actually you could do it with your fingers. Pinch the top to make them skinny, like so. Okay, and after you do that, I'm gonna squish them open. Now, when you open these up, you're gonna split these up into two. Two petals and two petals. Okay, you're going to open it up like so. Now they look like leaves. <laughs> then you're going to move one petal to one side and move the other petal to the other side. squish these some more hold it in the middle so you won't lose your base squeeze some more and squeeze again okay so the hydrangea flowers they look like a square so this is what you want Perfect. So for me, I just want a few to sort of dangle off of my project. I'm not exactly sure what's going to look best. So I'm going to create 20. It's up to you how many you want to make. Oh, also another thing. Okay. Let's not have these flat. I don't want them too. I don't want to do it too much. I just want to do it enough. Okay. Let's get a side shot. 
Oh, look, it's working. It's working. It's working, guys. It's working. Okay, okay, hurry, hurry. To the UV light. To the, ba to the back caves. Okay, I've been practicing, and I have been able to get this really thin and beautiful. I'm about to show you how. You're going to need one of these bamboo skewers. Okay, we're going to go in. Dunk. Pull up, tilt it to the side. See this excess that's dripping? Because since this is UV, cured with UV, um, we have a lot of work time. Try to pull this excess off by rolling this bamboo skewer. Okay, then it won't be so gloopy and clumpy as before. Can you see that? So if you get a hole, or if while you're dipping, just one of the wires pops, let's say. You don't have to do the whole thing over again. Just take what's on your stick and go across it like that. And see, you actually close it up. And before you cure it, make sure there's no pooling by rotating your flower making sure that it's not collecting anywhere specific turn on your light go ahead and turn okay once you've done that for a little bit then you can put it under the light completely so to create this creamy white color i have to have white and i have to have some kind of cream this is the just resin white uh where is the name? Maybe I'm just blind because I am. I'm blind. These are both opaque colors. Resin 8. Parchment. I use parchment a lot. A lot. I'm so sad they are no longer in business. It's always best to mix your pigment paste before you use them. What's on my stick should be enough. Of course, you guys can use a cup I'm just using these. It's just something that was out and easy to use. I believe that this might be too much pigment for this amount of resin. Just using what's left on this uh, stick here. Remember guys, it is always easier to darken a color than lighten a color. So don't do like me and put too much of this color parchment in there. I believe if I paint the underside, it will give it more depth and leave the clear on the top. It will it will look like it's clear top coat. Yeah, I like it. Do you see how um, in, instead of looking like this where it's all white in a blob, it you can see the actual gold um, wire if you paint the underside. I like that a lot better. I like how that looks. What do you guys think? Instead of looking like this. Right? Mm, mm, mm. Good choice. Good choice. Okay. So let's wait till this sort of levels out because um, you have some lines. Do you see that? Maybe because there's not enough. I guess I'll add a little bit to it. Think of it like you're painting nails. When you're painting nails, you don't want to leave any bald spots before you start letting it dry. So tap, tap, tap. I'm tapping it on there, on the little bald spots. And then I'm going to let it even out and settle before I cure it. Well, look how pretty that is. Because it would have looked like this on the top if we would have painted the top. Because who's looking at the underside of the flowers, right? Beautiful. Okay, now I'm going to make many, many more and I'll be back. I keep doing these cream colored stuff. Um, I wanted to show you what they would look like if you were to paint them. Purplish, purplish, bluish color. You see hydrangea is a lot with this kind of color.
product of the colors that I used. So I just wanted to color them, although these are not the greatest petals and I'm going to be tossing these, I just wanted to show you the beautiful colors. And if you bunch these together and have a big bouquet of them to create the one big flower that usually hydrangeas are known for, they would look gorgeous. Okay guys, so here's the conclusion of this experiment. Okay, for the glue, it doesn't seem to matter what brand of clear glue that you use. Next, the UV resin. Depending on the kind of UV resin you are using, the ratio of the glue that you are going to use will be different. But the ratio I used was one drop to 50 grams of UV resin. The point though was the consistency of the formula after it was mixed, it needs to be really gloopy. As you saw, it was really runny and sticky and stretchy like egg whites. Also, Another point is I was unsuccessful in curing any larger pieces of wire art. Lastly, the coloring. If you're going to color them an opaque color, I really suggest for you to color the underside so you can see the beautiful gold wires. If you're using a translucent color, I think it's sort of up to you whether you want to paint the top or the underside or even both. I really hope that you found this experiment exciting and informative. I had so much fun doing it because I was not going to quit, okay? <laughs> I will be adding these hydrangea flowers to these projects here, which I will be taping separately. If you like resin art, please like and subscribe. Leave any questions or comments below. I will try my best to get back to everyone. So until next time.